My name is Stephen White. So my name is UK. I'm 16 years old. Uh, my name is Dita. I'm 16 and I'm in grade 11. <laughs> I'm uh, Ross and I'm 17 years old. Hi, I'm Trevor and I'm in grade 12. Uh, I'm Akash, I'm in grade 12 too. I'm Carlo in grade 12 as well. I'm a teacher here at Father Michael Gates. Um, I specialize in the robotics program here at Father Michael Gates, um, where kids build different types of robots, different types of robots, different types of robots, different types of robots. Specialist High Skills major program that um, allows students to focus on a core area of studies, in this case robotics, allowing them to graduate from Father Michael Gates with a red seal, which indicates that they've completed a area of focus while in high school. Any student coming into the school is allowed to enroll into the program. Uh, however, we usually find at our school here more academic students than um, students of other disciplines. However, students that are going to uh, go into the workplace, they could also take the specialist high skills major. It may be challenging the academic portion, however the hands-on portion sometimes for these students can be uh, quite uh, beneficial for their grades. Hard work. Definitely hard work. Yeah, yeah definitely hard work. So you have to switch around uh, batteries sometimes, the whole swing going, like, um, you have to like keep changing, keep uh, adapting to the, the um, the conditions outside where the track is. And, uh, yeah, it's just hardware. And unfortunately, I don't want to spend the time formatting it out, so I decided I would just use a very old school method to make sure that the data could not be recovered. So, this is a very old school method to delete data. Oh, here we go. Yeah, that's exactly what I was looking at. I want to make sure the disc was broken. Now that the disc is broken, then I can throw this for recycling. Students that are enrolled in the program get many advantages, including uh, additional training, um, off-site visits to colleges and universities, off-site visits to uh, manufacturers of different computer technology. We are the only school on our board currently offering a uh, specialist high skills major in what's known as ICT, specializing in robotics.
10 years ago when I arrived at the school, um, they had a couple of uh, classes in computer engineering. At that time, the core focus was on building computers and taking apart computers. Um, with technology changing and computers moving more to a form factor, I felt that it was a good idea for us to move the engineering program to something that would give students skills that they could use in the future. And some of those skills are um, robotics, and we see a lot of robotics in manufacturing. So the course evolved over time. We went from basically taking apart computers to the point now where we build complete robots. What is this? It's a card reader. Card reader. Yeah. I think it's a card reader. But they're, they're like, okay. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. is our task as well to get around the whole foyer it's uh, this big corridor that turns around back to our class so it's got uh, some challenges but yeah it should be easy to
The students have a lot of uh, resources at their disposal. Um, we have a complete um, set of parts, everything from resistors to capacitors to diodes to LEDs to motors to uh, mechanical parts to build robots. So they have a complete set of parts at their disposal at any time to manufacture their own robots. Also, uh, hands-on tools are all available for the students to work on their bots. And we've got a great environment with uh, good equipment uh, for students to assemble things. Uh, top quality soldering irons, uh, good vices to hold things together, um, modern uh, computers for doing programming, uh, proper interface cables. Um, we're pretty lucky here at Father Michael Gates. We've got a, a nice classroom uh, for the students to work in. As of next year, uh, September 2015, uh, we'll be introducing a grade 9 lo um, robotics class. It'll be based on uh, the LEGO model. Um, that LEGO model um, will continue, the students can continue using that into grade 10. However, they'll be encouraged to move away from the LEGO modeling uh, to using pickaxe programming chips and building their own interfaces rather than uh, having pre-built hardware. They'll build their own interfaces with motor controller chips and motors. Um, from there, they go into the grade 11 program where they'll have a basic chassis that they'll get and they'll have to add peripherals to that chassis. Uh, things like robotic arms to pick things up and move things around uh, or sensors to sense temperature, um, distance, color, etc. So they'll get a variety of sensors in the grade 11 course. This is why I want to introduce these next year for the grade 11s, because they're fast and they're fun. What? Imagine having a remote for them. We should build these this Just year. Just you know, have a test group. Yeah, you're the test group for the Rover 5. You know what? I wouldn't mind spending a summer. <laughs> On the grade 12 program, the students will um, present a proposal, um, which will be approved, and they'll have to take all these concepts that they've learned in the previous years to complete that proposal. Their proposal may be um, having the ability to uh, pick up an object and move it. Uh, their proposal may be to be able to go around a room and sweep a floor. Uh, their proposal may be to do a variety of different things. Uh, it could be anything from picking up objects to moving them around to going outside and cutting grass. It could be a proposal that you go outside and do sampling of soils with a robot and uh, test for temperature. So students can bring a proposal to me that they'd like to use um, that they feel would be useful in their daily lives. Can you try it again? I want to see where exactly it puts the ball. Yeah. Yeah. For me it's probably more important that students learn how to work together. That um, students learn that they may be strong in one area but weak in other areas. And this course is conducive to teaching them that skill. Some are very good programmers. Some are very good at building hardware. 
And when they combine the two, someone good at software and hardware, they can come up with fantastic projects. And when students combine their skills, they learn that not only can they build a better project, but they learn how to cooperate and work with one another. And I encourage this in the classroom. I encourage students to work with one another, not always come to the teacher for the solution. To a difficulty, but to interface with one another and find the student that has the skill set that will assist them. And this will help them in the future when they get out of high school and get into college or university because they'll know where to go. They'll find students that can help them in areas that they're weak and then they can bring their strengths to those relationships. The thing I learned probably the most from this course is learning how to learn because it's a lot of independent learning and it helps you build yourself as a character. All right, so this class is really free. You can do anything you want, except in a reasonable range. As long as that's fine, it's fun. Considerably, there's a lot of uh, freedom, and you can self-learn almost anything, and everyone can put input into your ideas. You can do the same. Yeah, basically the programming I enjoy most here, because, you know, it's most of, yeah, struggling, the most thing. Oh, yeah. but, but we do have to like follow the class. Oh, it's a code of conduct, I suppose that's what you call it. So yeah, there's that too. I like the atmosphere to be honest. Uh, coming here every day with just um, friends who just like to build stuff, make programs, make robots. It's just a technology, uh, technology class basically. Yeah, we learn stuff every day, something new. Even if we're not working on our robots, we're still doing something, educating somehow. I um, I enjoy the lack of pressure on students to really do work. I mean, there's some pressure, but it's very lenient because everyone works at their own pace. And if they get help, they can get help. So, my teaching style is really free. You could, well, as long as it's a reasonable range, you don't, he won't get pissed at you. He will, he, he provides rather than, well, he provides rather of like a more teach yourself kind of way rather than sit in a class, sit in a desk, and I'll teach you how to do it. For example, drill bits. He taught us how to put it on and just was to play I with it. My, I drill my finger. Basically, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the reason why you killed yourself. That doesn't that is fine. <laughs> Soldering, we did, we did by ourselves. Um, the actual programming, we helped ourselves either. So his, his, his design is basically group work, extend up like single-handedly solving your own problems. It's a different way. I like the way um, I learned how to work with most of the people I'm around, uh, the environment I'm in. So it's it's better than sitting around and then just always doing paperwork or just generally all that stuff. To me that he's really open in this course. So basically when you go ask the person for uh, help, he doesn't mind that you share the program. So yeah, it's really open in this course. And Mr. Roy, let's see. His, his way of teaching is efficient. The only hard part that if you ask anyone and they would say in the test is probably the test. <laughs> yeah. The test. The test. Yeah. Okay, students are required to take um, grade 11 and grade 12 computer science and computer engineering. They're also required to take grade 11 mathematics. Most students will take a grade 12 mathematics as well, but it's not required. The other component that's required is for them to take a two credit co-op course to encourage them to learn more skills relevant to their uh, specialist high skills major program. Other parts of their specialist high skills program include certificates and reach ahead um, opportunities. The certificates include things like basic electrical training, WIMIS, CPR, first aid, computer hardware, computer software, customer service, etc. In terms of reach ahead experiences, reach ahead experiences can include everything from going to the Science Center and possibly a trip to Palladium to examine the gaming systems and how they're integrated there, to reach aheads to colleges and universities. Those are the different things and different aspects that students will. Um, experiences that students will enjoy when they do the Specialist High Skills Major program.
Actually turns it to the door. Oh, no way. Who 
will be come first. And the next time, Chisel 2015. <laughs> I love Mr. Wright to be honest. He's great. Man. Yeah, he's a great teacher. His teaching is pretty effective because if you need help, you ask him, but he's not going to hover over you and then help you. So he'd sort of you, you leave you clues. He's probably like, and one of the best teachers yeah. in the school. Yeah. Pro the, pro give the best yeah. teacher in the school. Yeah. I've had him for three years and yeah, it's the best experience. I take the course because Mr. Wright teaches it. Though someone else probably not. Oh, oh, oh. Wow. That's a good one. I would say to enjoy life to the fullest, not to get stuck anywhere. Never feel that you have to. Always, there's always a way out. There's always a way to try something different. There's opportunities out there that are endless. There's opportunities to try different things. I myself have had more jobs than you can imagine and still have an entrepreneurial spirit to do other things other than just teach and bring those all to everyone else. You know, as a philosophy, I've tried to always do things for others. And with that, I always have peace of mind and enjoy life. Um, I learned a lot from this class. It was fun. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Thanks for watching. <laughs> <laughs> so cute.